Hello and welcome to this Cancer Grace webinar. My name is Bisham Chera. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Radiation Oncology at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'm also the associate chair for clinical operations and improvement and the director of patient safety and quality in my department. I uh, have expertise clinically and academically in treating and doing research treating head and neck cancer patients and doing research in the clinical, uh, the clinical field of uh, head and neck oncology. I'm a radiation oncologist uh, by profession. Uh, the next topic I would like to speak up, uh, discuss is how is HPV transmitted and does this mean that my partner cheated? Is my partner at risk of getting cancer for me? These are common questions that I get asked by from my patients when they get diagnosed with HPV-induced uh, head and neck cancer. So just some, some, some straightforward facts. HPV is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the United States and in the world. It's estimated that approximately 50% of all sexually active women and men are exposed to HPV once in their lifetime. And some experts estimate it to be higher, like 80%, and maybe even everyone has been exposed at some point uh, during their life. The interesting thing is, is that though everyone may be exposed, very few people have a, are no, unable to clear the infection and very few people have a persistent infection. The peak prevalence of HIV infection typically occurs within the first decade after sexual debut, typically between the ages of 15 to 25. And as I said, most HIV infections are cleared by your immune system in six to 12 months. So how is HPV virus thought to be transmitted? The most common route of transmission of the HPV virus into the mouth or throat of a person is thought to be through oral sex. So is there data that we can look to to uh, see uh, you know, what kinds of uh, sexual behaviors or uh, number of partners or uh, uh, um, other, other things that, that may predispose one to uh, having getting the HPV uh, virus infected in their throat. So this was a recent study done in the United States where they looked at a big population database uh, that is, uh, this is a database that's actually funded by the government where we collect a bunch of, uh, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of patients where we collect a lot of baseline health, char uh, health characteristic data and we follow them longitudinally and we actually get samples, oral rinse samples from their mouth and throat. And so in this study, they, they, they uh, looked in this population database, they looked at the oral rinse samples, and they checked for the HPV, high-risk HPV virus in the sample. And they looked to see, and they, and they looked to, uh, they went to, they associated uh, sexual behaviors with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the incidence of having the HPV virus. And so here's one of their, the main graphs from this paper, and I, the, you can uh, find this paper uh, online. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, there's a, a free publication because the NIH supported this research. And here we see that if you, as the number of partners increases, the prevalence of HPV infection increases for men more so than if for women. Down here is the, is the women. So as sexual number of sexual partners increase, the prevalence of the virus in the throat increases a lot more so for men than it is for women. When you look at lifetime oral sex partners, a similar thing is seen that as the number of lifetime oral sex partners increases, the prevalence of the virus for men in the throat increases, and for the women, it doesn't increase as much. And interestingly, after a certain threshold, um, the, the prevalence of the infection kind of levels off for men and for women. When you look at the association between lifetime vaginal sex partners and, uh, and uh, between men and the, and the prevalence of HPV virus, again, a similar trend. It increases for men more so for women uh, as the number of sexual partners increases. Uh, but over after a certain threshold, again, the, the prevalence levels off. So, you know, what does this all mean? And what this means is that, uh, and in fact, in this graph, uh, for women, it, the number of vaginal sex partners really didn't correlate with an increase in the HPV uh, pr uh, prevalence. But you know, what, is, what does all this mean? So this, 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 uh, this data shows that the 
HPV oral infection is more common in men. I think we can conclude that from these studies. Also, uh, certain sexual behaviors may increase one's risk to getting a human papillomavirus infection. Okay. Uh, the prevalence of infection really doesn't get above 10%. So it's not that everyone is going to get this virus and everyone's going to get uh, cancer. I think that you know we have. To, if you look at the, here at the over here on the y-axis, really the the prevalence of the infection really doesn't get much higher than 10%. Uh, why is it that men are predisposed more so than women to the HPV infection? And that's an area of debate and controversy, and a lot, there's a lot of theories. One theory is is that that women uh, are exposed much earlier in life to the human papillomavirus, and their exposure in the cervix results in more rapid development of immunity earlier in their life than men. And that men actually get, you know, they don't develop immunities um, as soon as women do. And so they get more, so women are basically auto, they immunize their, themselves to getting, from, for, they immunize themselves from getting uh, HP infection in the throat because they're exposed in their cervix at such a, at a younger age. And so they, a lot of women already have immunity against um, the human papillomavirus infection in the throat, whereas men do not. And so that's one theory that's uh, been uh, spoken about and discussed at, uh, in national meetings and, and conferences. But HPV transmission is not just from sexual contact. Um, I'm not going to go too much into this editorial, but I, you can uh, read this online. But HPV may also be translated, transmitted uh, other ways um, than uh, from sexual contact. Uh, HPV may be transmitted Fomites. And so what's a fomite? A fomite is any long-living object or substance capable of carrying infectious organisms like skin cells, hair, clothing, doorknobs. There have been studies that showing that people who have an HPV genital infection, if you check their hands, you can find a um, virus that is infectious. And, you know, if you can imagine that this virus on their hands, they touch a doorknob, you touch the doorknob, you, you know, rub your mouth or whatever, and there's a potential possibility that you can get HPV infection, oral infections without, without having risky or excessive sexual uh, uh, behaviors. Um, and so this, this information is important because quite often uh, I have, you know, the question of, did my partner cheat on me, uh, and et cetera. You know, and if there's other ways one can get HPV infection, you know, I, you know that, uh, that gives a different context for those kinds of concerns. So just in general, how many people out there walking around right now have HPV infection in their mouth? So this was a paper that was done uh, where they basically uh, collected oral sal salivary samples from men and women aged 14 to 69 years of age, and they checked the, the sample for the HPV virus. None of these people had cancer. And so the, the, the about 7% of people right now, an estimate, it's a good estimate, of people in the United States have HPV DNA, uh, have an HPV infection, or you can detect HPV DNA in their in their saliva of their mouth throat. Of that, only one percent right now probably walk in, in the general population have high risk cancer um, cancer predisposing type of HPV HPV 16. So the the prevalence of this oral HPV infection is low in the United States. And it's really low to, for the uh, very uh, serious HPV-16 cancer-causing uh, virus. Another thing from this study, again, is that the HPV prevalence was three times higher in men compared to women. So again, men are more predisposed to having an oral infection with HPV. And this data is important because, as I'll talk about later in, in the other topic about vaccinations, there's a lot of debate about who should be vaccinated, should it be men, only, should it be women only, should it be men, and we'll talk about that later. So this data, you know, supports the, the, the vaccination of men and also, and women, and uh, the so-called benefit of herd immunity uh, to, to is, um, is, is also uh, important in this uh, for the HPV uh, 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 dilemma in the United States and in the world. So 
sometimes patients ask me, you know, they have, they're sitting in the, in, the, in, the, in the clinic room and they have oropharynx cancer that's uh, caused by the human papillomavirus and they'll ask me, you know, does my partner have the virus? And there's good data that, and studies that have been done that show that, you know, well, they'll take up uh, the patient with cancer and they'll take the, their partner who doesn't have cancer and check the partner for the HPV infection in their throat and the incidence of finding HPV in the, in the throat saliva of uh, partners of patients is very, very low. And so I tell patients that it's unlikely that your partner has this virus. Uh, there are ways to check for it, but it's most likely the test is going to be negative, and I, and I don't think we need to worry about that. So common questions. Will I still have HPV infection in my throat mouth after treatment? And I, tell, I, I think the answer is no. Most patients, most patients clear the infection after treatment. So if you're a patient and you have an HPV-associated head neck cancer, there have been studies showing that after treatment, when they check, your, check, check the saliva in your mouth and throat for HPV, it's not there anymore. Uh, so it's clear. And the other question I have is, you know, should my partner be checked? And I kind of discussed it already. I don't think that's necessary. Um, will my partner get the same cancer I have? So it has been observed and reported that you'll, you know, and published that, you know, that married, some married couples, some other couples, both have developed the same kind of tonsil base of tongue cancer. Both um, have HPV found in their tumors. But this occurrence is extremely rare. And I've never seen it, but people have published on it. And so I, I advise my patients and their partner that the risk is super, super, super low that you would, uh, that your partner would get the same kind of cancer. 